Hello everybody and happy Wednesday. I hope you're all having a lovely week. So this week I thought I would do something just a little bit different. I thought I would do something related to movies. I love seeing these tags on YouTube, on AuthorTube, and I've realized through these tags that I don't actually read as much as I used to when I was younger. There's a lot that I've missed out on by not reading, but there is something that I do, and that's watch a lot of movies. So I first saw this tag over at Bookish Pen Babes uh, YouTube channel, and then she, I guess, tagged Wolfshot Publishing, and like I said before, I watch his videos all the time, so I saw it and I got really excited while he was answering to answer these questions myself. So that's what I'm gonna do today. If you're interested in doing this tag, I have linked the original Cam's and Bookish Pen Babes videos in the description, and I've also listed the questions for you. Question number one, what is your favorite movie of all time? This is The Craft. I love that movie. It's starring Veruza Balk, Robin Tunney, Rachel True, and um, Nev Campbell. And it's this totally 90s witch movie about these four teenage girls in high school in California who practice magic and it gets really wild and it gets really dark and it's visually stunning, the acting is amazing, it's I, it's my favorite movie, I love it so much. Question number two, what is your favorite scene from that movie? So in The Craft there's this guy Chris and the main character kind of has a crush on him. Spoiler alert, she puts a spell on him to make him fall in love with her. So he's like head over heels for her and he, it gets of course dark and he starts stalking her essentially and it's kind of freaking her out and then they go on a date and he gets aggressive. So she goes back and she tells her friends and one of the friends, Nancy, who has taken all of this magic and all of this power that has been granted to them and she's taken it to a dark place she decides to teach Chris a lesson. And so she takes him, she goes to this high school party that he's at, and she takes him upstairs, and she's like um, trying to seduce him, and he's not into it. He's kind of drunk, and he's just asking for, um, what's her name? Nancy is my favorite character, but I can't remember the other girl's name. Sarah. So he's only asking for Sarah, and he's kind of drunk, and Nancy is trying to convince him to hook up with her. So what she does is she glamours him, and she makes herself look like Sarah, and it kind of works. So Sarah and the other two friends realize what Nancy's doing and where she's gone, and they've come to try to stop her, and they burst into the room where Nancy and Chris are making out with Nancy wearing Sarah's face, and it's kind of freaky. And then Chris is like, what? You're a witch! Ah! And Nancy is like, oh yeah, she's a witch too! And Chris is freaked out, and she's like, Nancy starts, you know, pointing out all of the horrible things that he's done to girls. So Chris has a reputation of being this guy who hooks up with girls and leaves them, or even, according to Nancy, gives them icky diseases. So she's mad, she's pissed off, and she's like, you're a screw up and all you do is treat women like whores but actually you're the whore and Chris goes I'm sorry and he's like standing in front of a window and she's like oh you're sorry you're sorry and she screams and then he falls out of the window and he's dead and it's like the best scene one of the best scenes in that movie then there's this other scene where like Sarah's in the shower and or hiding in the shower and Nancy says a really brutal biting line go watch that movie it's a great fantastic movie um, it's not accurate for paganism or witchcraft very much, but um, it's a fun movie. Question number three, who is your favorite actor or actress? My favorite actor is Johnny Depp. I have loved him since I was six years old, and I, I think he's a fantastic talent. I think he's got such a wide range, and he's just so much fun to watch in everything that he does. I could probably list like all of the movies that he's done next to all of the movies that he's done that I've seen and it would be like maybe like like this I don't know I also really 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 like Nicolas Cage and I have probably seen most of his movies as well I also wanted to try to find a favorite actress and I realized I don't really have a favorite favorite actress I love 
women so much and I love female actress, um, female actors and I love people who seem to have like a wide range and I watch a lot of actresses so it's actually extremely hard for me to try to narrow it down. I did come up with like a couple like there's Angela Bassett and Halle Berry, people that I've loved since I was a child and that I've grown up watching and enjoying their movies. There's Rosario Dawson and Jennifer Goodwin, mainly because of Once Upon a Time. I love her so much as Snow White and I have watched that show like six times all the way through, not including the seventh season, um, but mainly just for her because she's Snow White and I love her and I love seeing Snow White and Prince Charming together and it's beautiful and it's perfect. More recently, I have fallen in love with Lupita Nyong'o. Um, I'm sure I'm not the only one in the world because she's just fantastic to watch and she's so funny and she's so just, she's cute and she seems really, really just, just like she knows her shit. She knows what she's talking about. She knows what she wants and she knows what she's going after in her life. Question number five, who is the best director? I think Guillermo del Toro. He directed Pan's Labyrinth and that's one of the most beautiful movies I think I've ever seen and everything that he's made that I've seen just is visually striking and it's just wonderful for me so he he creates an experience and that's really what I love about him. Question number six what is your favorite guilty pleasure film? It's an entire series it's the Saw series I love the Saw series I love it so much. There's so much blood and gore and so many different kinds of traps and so many different ways for people to be forced to kill themselves. It feeds the darkness inside of me in a beautiful way. I just, I think these movies are fun and they're not really... The first couple of movies I think were trying to get a message across and I think later on in the series that was less the intent and it definitely became more about torture and gore and horror porn and I just eat it all up. I love it. Question number seven, what is your favorite tear jerker? I think this was a tough one for me too because just about anything that's not strict comedy or horror can probably make me cry. Any kind of contemporary or romance or like slice of life will probably at some point make me cry and even horrors have been known to make me cry. So it's not hard for me to categorize a movie as a tearjerker, but I think my favorite is A Walk to Remember. I think that's an easy one for if I want to feel things and get in touch with my, my younger, emotional, cute side. It's A Walk to Remember. That movie touches me every time I watch it. And Mandy Moore is just, she's just the sweetest little person. And then what that movie is about is it's really a lot deeper than it seems. I think it's a beautiful movie. Question number eight. Which character from a movie scared you the most? I think this would be Emily Rose from The Exorcism of Emily Rose. I was, I think, 16 when I first saw that movie and it freaked me the heck out. I didn't even want to like go down into our basement by myself um, where one of the bathrooms was. But, like I just didn't want to do it. I was scared and just hurt. As a character, she her belief was just so strong, and then as an actress, her body contortions were just so believable, and then just all of that put together, this strong religious belief and this supernatural or religious kind of, the supernatural paranormal kind of element, um, this darkness, this connection with magic and connection with like biblical things that I grew up knowing about and reading about and studying. Um, all of this together just made it a frightening movie for me. One of the very, very few horror movies that have actually caused me to feel fear. And in the scene in the barn, that's when I, that's when it hit me, like that fear. Um, and I, I don't know. I. She scared me right then and there. Number nine, what's a movie that you love that everyone hates? I can make like an entire book on all the movies that I love that everyone hates. I love movies. I love them deep inside of me. And you ask what types of things Victoria loves. There's like food, there's like fluffy animals, there's like horror porn, torture porn, whatever. There's movies, like in general as a subject, movies. So. Here are just a couple of the movies that I love 
like really really enjoyed that everyone else seems to have hated. Resident Evil, Constantine, Van Helsing, Sucker Punch, and a tiny part of me really really loves Batman and Robin. I know it wasn't a good movie, but I mean George Clooney and like rubber ivy lips and the Riddler, it's everything I needed as a child. Question number 10, what's a movie that you hate that everyone seems to love? It's, I guess, the Lord of the Rings series. A lot of my friends and a lot of the people in my life seem kind of obsessed with Lord of the Rings, and I've never just, I've never been able to get into it. I've watched chunks of the movies, and I've sat or I've been in the room while the whole movie has played, and I've never really been pulled into it. Which sucks because it looks like it's super cool, like the setting is amazing and we wouldn't have the type of fantasy that we have if not for these stories. But I've just never been able to be sucked into these particular stories. Number 11, what's your favorite animated movie? And that would have to be Rockadoodle, a Don Bluth film. And um, yeah, watch it. It's on YouTube. You can just watch it. It's watch it. It's about a rooster that's kind of like Elvis. Question number 12, who is your actor or actress crush? So besides Johnny Depp, who is an obvious number one there, um, I have recently been watching Altered Carbon on Netflix and I'm really really into the two guys who play um, Takeshi Kovacs, just the main character of that show. They are Joel Kinnaman and Byron Mann. I find them both, like, unnecessarily attractive. Like, why you gotta be that cute? What's the point? But on top of that, I've also been watching True Blood. A friend of mine finally got me into it, and I honestly don't know why it took so long. I am very biased when it comes to vampire stuff. I'm very picky about my vampire lit, or I used to be. At this point, like, since last year, I've just been taking in whatever vampire stuff I can get. And I'm actually glad I did, because then I got to see Rutina Wesley, and she plays Tara on um, True Blood. And if I might have mentioned at some point that I don't really like the main characters. Um, if I didn't mention it, Suki and Bill are just the worst. I just don't like them, and they're the reason that I didn't want to like this show. But Tara is the reason I kept coming back, and she is just one of the most beautiful people I think I have ever seen. She's just so gorgeous and then the actress herself is just so strong and so good. Despite the accents on that show, the acting is actually not that bad and Rutina Wesley just, she stole my heart. So did Lafayette. Like those two characters just, and then Eric and then Pam and then don't get me started. Question number 13, who is your favorite movie villain? This would be The Darkness from Silence Hill. It's more of a faceless villain. The darkness comes and with it comes all of these horrors. All of this terrifying stuff like weird dead nurses and dudes with giant weapons and just horrifying decay and fear and negativity. And when you realize, when you find out what the source of that darkness is, it makes it that much more chilling, it makes it that much more heart-wrenching, and it's probably another one of those on the list of movies that I love that not everybody liked or that the critics panned, but it is such a great movie and it's such a great visual experience and a thought-provoking movie and it really makes you think about family and think about the connections that families have and the horrible things that people can do and the ways that they use to tell themselves it's okay to do those horrible things. So I definitely think that the darkness encompasses all this horror and all this fear and just the truth and that's not a common thing for an idea of darkness. Typically when you think truth, you think of the light, but the truth was more alive when the darkness was revealed or when the darkness was understood and, and touched. Number 14, what movie surprised you the most? I think this would be Tucker and Dale versus Evil. I saw this, I don't know, like seven years ago, and it is one of my favorite movies because of what it does with the horror genre. If you've seen this movie, then you know exactly what I'm talking about. And if you haven't and you like horror, this is definitely a movie for you. 
it takes all of these fantastic horror tropes, the kids lost in the woods, the creepy rednecks, the creepy cabin, and it turns all of these things on their head to give you like just a really fun comedic movie where there are characters that for me I adore, I think I just want to hug some of them and also slap some of the other ones. It's, it's just a really interesting movie and I didn't know what to expect when I first watched it. I thought maybe it was going to be just another campy scary movie type, which scary movie does a fun... scary movie kind of set the bar for turning horror tropes on its head, but that was more spoofy and this was more of like a movie, a self-contained story where crazy crap was happening but it wasn't exactly what you would have expected. It was the other side of things. Question number 15. If you could go back in time and marry any actor or actress from back then, who would it be? That depends on how far back in time we're talking because I could very much have married a young Wesley Snipes. I'm kind of obsessed with Wesley Snipes. We're not obsessed, but I'm just really interested in him. So I'd marry a young Wesley Snipes or a young or present day or whenever LL Cool J. I've already said Johnny Depp for everything, so he's already like number one on who I would marry young and back when he was like maybe just starting out and the hair was just like to here and he was still getting in, getting into his actor groove. If you're going further back, Muhammad Ali, I know he wasn't like strictly actor, he was more of a boxer who sometimes did a movie, but um, I would probably have married Muhammad Ali or Elizabeth Taylor if she decided to swing my way. I would absolutely have loved to have known and spent some real significant time with Elizabeth Taylor. Number 16, what is the first movie you remember watching in theaters? I can't really remember the first movie I watched in theaters, but I think it's Angels in the Outfield. I either went on a field trip and watched that with my school, or we watched it as a movie night, and my brain is just making that movie night that we used to do in our library feel like a theater. But I definitely remember that as one of the first movies that I was in a theater setting where I was like eating popcorn and drinking soda and with my friends and like watching a movie. And I thought I would add one more question because why not? I like to try to make things a little bit different and a little bit unique if possible. So question number 17. What is your favorite non-animated movie from your childhood? For this one, I was kind of torn between Xenon, Girl of the 21st Century, and The Color of Friendship. Xenon came out in 1999, Color of Friendship came out in 2000, so I was like 10 and 11, and both of these movies really affected me and like kind of like guided me because Color of Friendship talks about things that happened in the past. It's about um, apartheid in the 70s and a, how a white South African student comes to live through the student exchange program with a black African American family. And they're expecting a black African, she's expecting a white family, and this is the 1970s. Apartheid is huge. There are all these racial biases that both sides have. There are all these things that both sides need to overcome. And at the end of the day, it's a movie about best friends and love and growth and family. And I think that's just one of the most beautiful things ever. On the other end of the spectrum is Sinan, Girl of the 21st Century, which is a movie about another set of best friends who live on a space station in space. And it's like, the language is fantastic, the music in that movie is fantastic, it's super fun, and this one is less about racial issues and more about global issues or issues of growing up. So Xenon hears from aliens and she is one of the few, I think she's like the only person who is listening to the messages that are coming through and is aware that something is about to go down and no one's listening to her. And then. On top of that, she's just always getting in trouble. She's kind of a wild child, and she has a lot of freedom and a lot of spirit. And the movie itself is really about kind of embracing your own unique personality, embracing who you are, and opening yourself up to other people, and opening yourself to other kinds of people, and kicking some ass. Those are my two favorite movies from when I was a child that are not animated.
And that is the end of this tag. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed this. If you would like to participate, I have tagged a few people in the description. Yeah, just do it, whether or not you're tagged. It's such a fun thing to do. If you like movies the way that I like movies, you're going to enjoy this. So thanks again. If you like this video, click the button below and subscribe. Share with all of your friends and come back and hang out with me again next Wednesday. Thank you so much and remember always that I love you. Bye.